Well, listen, thanks a million for doing this, first of all. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time out. Um, congrats. Fittest man in Europe. Pretty pretty nice ring to it, I'd say. Yeah, pretty, pretty surreal feeling when I woke up on Monday morning. It was pretty crazy. Like, yeah, uh, after a year of not competing and not knowing where everyone was at and with the past few months of, of making the decision where I'm going to go all in, it was a bit nerve-wracking knowing that, not knowing that, my hard work, what I was doing, was go- was going to be enough, and a bit scared that how how far away was everyone else going to be? Because yeah. obviously everyone was keeping the cards quite close to the chest the past few months over the open and things like that. So going into the open and just giving everything I had to see where I was at, and then quarterfinals again, I was pretty buzzing. But then Monday, mate, when I woke up, like I felt depressed. It was crazy, like. I've, it was a weird feeling I had, like, you're on that, that much of a high. And then the crash afterwards, mate, like, it was it was surreal. Like, I had to ring my coaches. I was like, yeah, I'm going to have to go home for a week. Yeah, like, I need to go and see my day ones and that and just fucking get a bit humbled off my mates who, who don't really give a shit about CrossFit. Like, yeah. they don't, like, they'll, they'll appreciate what I do, but they couldn't give a fuck. They'll be like, right, when, when we're playing COD next, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> they give me a bit, they're just humble on that side of things. So I just need to, like... Uh, just be stressed and just have a bit of a release and just see my see my mates from 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 where I live. Um, Do you think was that like so? Obviously, you got like you, you know it's physically and emotionally demanding, and you're exhausted yeah. and everything after it. Yeah. And then, do you think as well? Because I, I even noticed like there was a lot of people tagging you and stuff, and like you know yeah. sharing stories and stuff. Is that does it just get too much kind of when it's yeah? At that like, level? like it was um obviously it's nice my, to see it, but yeah, I appreciate the support and that, but. Uh, Steve was like, you need to be ready for it, and he was like, just, just take every message you get, if it's negative or positive, he's like, just acknowledge it and just move on to the side. He's like, don't overthink it and don't like get deluded. You, you see a lot of crossfitters these days, like they're in these like they build themselves up to these fake little bubbles they're in, and, and they put more pressure on themselves when when they don't need to. So he's like just just take each comment and just pass it on and just concentrate on your own training and what you're going to do and I felt that that helped a lot but still when after it blew up a bit when I was sitting at the top of the leaderboard after after day two and everyone started tagging me and things and then I had a bit of limelight on on the open when I done I done the um burpee and dumbbell snatch <laughs> workout yeah. uh, and then things started moving quite quickly with with everyone tagging me and things and it was it was a, it was it was getting a bit too much, um, and like my dad was like more buzzing about, and my dad and my stepmom were more buzzing about, and some Eastenders after following me, and they're like, "Can you get his autograph for us?" And I was like, "Fuck!" And I was like, "I'm not messaging someone like that to get a fucking autograph." Like, it was a little, it was, it was, it was, yeah, it's been crazy. Like, but um, I'm sure, I'm sure I'll get used to it. How important is it, do you think, for you to like even if we ignore the the obvious like um you know prowess he has as a coach when it comes to like programming and getting you physically yeah. prepared and stuff how important do you think it's been for you to have steve who's like been there and been through the same stuff that you are currently and about to go through oh he's just he's just i don't i don't know how he's done it without without someone like him yeah in his own life because he's the amount of stress him and jack have took, took off off my shoulders is like I, I can't thank them enough and like I wanted to do a number for them, like not not for more my sake, for for more their sake, for a bit appreciation of 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 the hard work as us as a team, what we've put in over the past few months, and just like I always said, I'm like quite realistic with my goals, and <clears throat> I'm not naive with what what things I need to work on, like uh, the workouts that came up in quarterfinals, like yeah, they the, the suited me, like they weren't perfect, but some of the workouts suited me quite well, and I was quite um, consistent with them, so I was happy with that, but. I'm not naive with what I've got to work on. So I, I've always said at the start of the season when we when we made the decision to go all in and move closer to the coaches was um, I'll do a number for you this year. And I wanted to get on the first goal was I wanted to get on the first page of the Open. Um, so come top 50. And then the next goal was um, once I found out where I was and where all the big lads were in, in Europe, I was like, the next goal is top five in Europe and top final. And then when the work I was got released, I was like, Fuck top five. I was like, we're gonna win it. I was like, I was like, we're taking the top spot. I was like, knee one squat and what we're squatting these days with, with with this engine like. But it was just saying that jokingly. But as it got closer and figured out where we were, we're like, we got a good shot at it. So we went, we went all in like. And it's Wigan you moved to, was it? 
yeah, we moved. I moved down to Wigan from from Newcastle. How far is that? Like an hour and a half or two? Well, is it? Ah, three hours. Is that okay? So um, it's not enough to where like you. So like I was saying about a bit of a mental stress and because I was staying at my coach's house, so I, I didn't have like my mates to chill around and just just totally release from. Like it's, it's too far away where I could just pop home for for the weekend. Do you know what I mean? It would mm. be, be too much driving. So is yeah, that, it was pretty hard. Obviously, like from watching your stories and that and from watching Steve's stories like there was a good bit of crack in the house like and you know it was a bit of a laugh or whatever but like like it's crazy like, he's about 40 in CrossFit years or something but like he feels like he's my age he goes on like he's my age like so we have good crack together like is it hard like is it hard to switch off though if you're say if you're training oh, totally mate like I couldn't because like, I used to work offshore <clears throat> and oh, all the hard when I was offshore was no, on the supplier vessels, so we just okay. like dodge around the rig. And all that I had when I was out there was just my phone. So I, I, I'm like naturally being on my phone all the time, and it pisses me off sometimes because I, I actually don't want to. So I'm like opening up social media when I actually don't want to do that. I'm just doing it like without thinking about it. So when I was down at Steve's house, like obviously I didn't have my PlayStation down there. I normally just watch a few games of COD in, but um, didn't have my PlayStation down there. So I was, I was always on. I was always on social media and everything. Obviously, I'm on Instagram is all about CrossFit, so, like, it was draining me without even knowing it was draining me, especially, like, with the leaderboards and knowing everyone, like, people what to put up, it was just, it was hard work without, without, I, did, I felt like it didn't have a pure release, that's why I felt like I had to just come home for a week and a bit now, just to recharge the batteries, reset, and then go again for the next, next phase of training before semis, like. Are you going to go back to Wigan? Yeah, we're going back down to Wigan, we've just got a house go through down there, me and my training partner, Taylor, so. Obviously, I'll have I'll take my PlayStation and that down there, but uh, probably be not allowed to play on it until fucking after semis and that now. Like <laughs> bed bedtime goes out the fucking window when you're on COD with the boys. Like. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen you pop up on a few podcasts. Like, are you is it is talking about yourself something that you're comfortable with? Is it like that side of the sport where you have to kind of uh, like, like share was, stuff? I remember, I remember when I first started doing it, and it was uh, it got pied on me, and it was when I was at One Palooza, and uh, and I banged the row event and the the woman came up to me, just caught me off guard. She was like, "Me in for an interview, man." Dolphins were fucking all over. Like, I literally, saw that interview. Yeah. I was up here. I was like, "I've got a strong accent." I was like, "I'm probably gonna try and flirt with you here, and you're not gonna have a chance." What I'm saying here, and I was just on a different planet. Like, <laughs> that was my my first first little dig about like talking on camera and that. And then I just kept getting told off by my mom and my coaches that I swear quite a bit. Like, but it's 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 sort of, sort of nip in the bud, really. Yeah, no, I empathize with that. Yeah, I remember seeing that interview and it was kind of like the first thing, like we watched it, I was like, oh man, he's so happy. And like, you could hear like the other JST crowd in the background and stuff shouting. And then I was just, I think like the second time I watched it, I just looked at Nikki and I was like, she hasn't a fucking clue. What he's <laughs> she hasn't a clue, nah, literally not a fucking Scooby. My yeah. dolphins were all over. Yeah. Um, you played rugby when you were growing up, is that right? Yeah, that's how, that's how I got in the CrossFit really. Um, and were you yeah, yeah. good? Like, uh, I was I was at an all right level. I probably I should have been doing things what to make to go to that next level again. But I was a bit I was a bit naive when it comes to my recovery and doing the right things in training. But I played at a decent standard. I played for North of England. Um, I played for my academy that was local to me, which is Newcastle Falcons. Oh, yeah. um, and then I got offered a scholarship to go to a boarding school when I was when I was sixteen which was for two years, which was a bit of a bit of a big change for me because moving her back away from home, it wasn't too far away. It was only like an hour away, but having a board there and fucking, yeah, I'd go to chapel every morning. It was like six days a week. And, school, preach, and I was like, preaching the choir. Uh, You're preaching the choir. Uh, I was in boarding school as well. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, I didn't get a scholarship. I, was, I wasn't good enough at sport for that kind of <laughs> shit. But yeah, we had to get up at, I remember we had a rota where yeah. we had to go to mass Someone, someone had to go to mass every morning at six o'clock in the morning. So, like, if your name came up, it was just you and the priest, like sitting in a room saying mass, and it was just. And then every morning you had to go down for prayers at like seven, and then go for yeah. breakfast together, and the food was shite. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, so went there for for two years, and I, I hated it, mate. For the first, first couple of weeks, it was well out my comfort zone. You had to be in, you had to be in uh, your room at a certain time on a night time. And it was like prep, it was called. So you had to do two and a half hours in your room. And, and I didn't realize how strict it was. So I was like, first couple of weeks, I was just dotting around my, my mates' rooms. And I'd be getting caught by the headmaster in the rooms and that. And he's like, what are you doing in here? And I'd be having a rave in there. And he's like, no, no, 
doesn't work like that around here and I was like oh shit so it was like it was a bit of a climate change to get used to and I enjoyed it after that once you got to know the boys and you got used to being away from home a bit it was like it was just like lad sleep over for two years really like it was, it was good crack so when when did rugby stop being the focus and like I assume uh, you just said there that you you kind of went all in say this year on cra- CrossFit like up until yeah. it was a kind of like a more than a hobby but not really full time yet. What as in CrossFit or were you saying yeah rugby? CrossFit yeah. Oh um so like when I so I finished boarding school and then I, I had trials for North of England again when I was under eighteen and but I got glandular fever and then that rocked rocked my world a bit it was like my first proper. And I got I've been injured before, but that was the first point where I like I stopped totally rug- playing rugby and things like that. Yeah. And I came back from it. Um, I w- I was still playing for playing for Newcastle, and then I was just I would just get the sessions what I needed to do. And playing when I was at the academy, I wouldn't train my legs. I wouldn't. I'd just do things I wanted to do. And then they realised I was just very injury prone with my hamstrings, so they ended up dropping me from that. And then I went back to play for my club, where I, where I live, Westall. And they just weren't on the same page as me. Like from that, we were in a good league, but the lads that I was playing with, they didn't really, they didn't want to win enough for it. So like, they would, they, if we lost, they would, they would go out on the piss still. But if they won, yeah. they got, they, there wasn't like any like professionalism where, where I came from, where all the lads wanted to do better themselves and they would mm. train, they do all their extra sessions. So I felt like I loved the rugby when it come to that, come to that, and then. One of the lads um, who, who used to play at Westall, he he opened up the CrossFit gym in Sunderland. He's like, come down for a bit of conditioning with the rugby team. We ended up going down there and then I ended up falling, falling in love with CrossFit. CrossFit from there when I see my, my mate come through the doors. And Mikey was a bit like chalk and cheese. I was like, he came in and he ripped his top off and he was shredded, mate. And I was like, I was, a, I was at a barrel at the time. I was smashing kebab wraps in still. <laughs> trying to trying to chase some abs and Mikey who came in with his top off. I was like, who the fuck's this prick? I was like, you come in my gap with your top off. I was like, no, no, it doesn't work like that. And then I remember doing a workout together against him, and uh, we just went all in on this workout. And then ever since then, we just became a uh, good training partner off it. And then we've probably knew CrossFit about five years now. And uh, were you? So did you start playing rugby when you were working on, uh, like, out on the ships, or was that? Did that you... was that was a point where I was like kinder in rugby, kinder in CrossFit, and then okay. it got to the point where I was up my my cadetship was uh, three years. So at the end of the three years, it was um, I got to the point where we went to competitions with Mikey. It wasn't big competitions, but it was enough to where I couldn't I couldn't keep working away and do the training at the same time. So I come back off the ship, I'd be I'd be weak as piss, and then to try and catch everything back up in a month to go back away to lose it again. It was just too mentally, yeah. too mentally draining. So I just, I wrapped it in and then, and started working, working for my dad. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned there, like, so pe- like people in the UK and Ireland, I suppose would be like fairly familiar with you from those kind of smaller competitions, I guess. I know my own coach, yeah. Joe met you at like battle for middle ground and a couple of All right. yeah. couple things a few years ago. And then like yeah. done castle games and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But then like water Palooza and filthy, were they like would you consider those your first like major step into the sport kind of um we we done one a few years ago it was called alpha games i think it was called alpha games and it was in nice so it was the first one abroad and my yeah. mates came over for that and uh that was against like lucas holberg and um david and munwilder like there's a bit, some big names in it so mm-hmm. me and mike were buzzing just to just to be alongside people like that so i'll, I'll probably say that was worth were first step to, to the big competitions and then definitely Wadpalooza and Filthy 150 ramped it, ramped it up again. Yeah, you did like the, I suppose what I'd consider to be like the last in-person event really before COVID with, with Steve, like you did the, the paired... Uh, yeah, Battle from Middle Ground. Battle from Middle Ground. Like, yeah. did, you, did you feel then, so like, did you feel then that there was something coming or like, was there is there a point, can you pinpoint a moment where you were like, all right, next year I actually think something big could happen? Yeah, after I won that twelve minute roll probably is a mud loser. Yeah. So like the second day that and I just thought I was like, if I've got the capacity to dig it with all these fucking big lads and I'm not the tallest button in the box. Uh, yeah, I think it surprised a lot of people because like, you know, rowers, tall guy work out really like, but yeah. just absolutely destroyed it. Like <laughs> it, like is there 
so I like another thing I heard like Fraser on his show with Josh and Savan talking about um going into workouts and um how you feel when you're stepping up to a workout like and it kind of yeah. I thought it made me think of it earlier on when you were saying about how when you saw the workouts for the quarters release you were like oh fuck yeah like we'll have this but like Fraser was kind of saying and Josh seemed to agree with him that like he he's only once ever gone into a workout thinking I'm going to win this and every other time he's gone in afraid or he's gone in like yeah you know um unconfident like like confident yeah. in his movements but knowing that he has to do everything absolutely perfectly or he's going to fuck it up like yeah. is yeah. when you're sitting on the rower at Water Palooza you obviously know you're strong on it are you thinking yeah. like I'm going to win this event or are you thinking like oh, I, just, I, I knew know. I knew I was I knew I was I was I was good on it and I was going to be placed high but i didn't realize how how good it actually was yeah until he like when i remember starting it i was like okay so i'm gonna come out the box here so you can hold on and i remember getting this split down to like 110 on the rower and it was me and cole sega and um i can't remember what this other lad but he was rolling like a bag of spanners one of them i was like i don't know how you're even pulling this on mate i was like you're rolling like a bag of shit over there and uh we just come out of the blocks and i was just like so you can hold on the longest and you're holding like a decent split and then I was like, it's more of a men- mental game when you can see someone else's score on on the monitor as well. Mm. So I was like, if you hold on for that this extra minute longer, you you you're not going to get yourself into a race towards the end where it's going to be it's going to be harder. So I was acting fitter than I actually was on it. So like, rather than just if he dropped off the pace, if I dropped off the same pace as him, and I was just like a couple of meters ahead, it would have gotten to a more of a race towards the end. So I was like, I was grafted like for another twenty seconds longer than them, but that twenty seconds mentally for them was just like oh he's 100 meters ahead now like that's too much to make up and the last minute i think the other lad tried to bang uh some big pulls in to to see where he was at and i, I just matched the pulls just let him know like he's not getting any pulls to here and then he just thought nah fuck that yeah. at the end. And it was pretty sound like i wasn't that fucked off it like obviously endorphins all over so that, that took over with adrenaline but like i wasn't that wasn't the hardest thing I've ever done on the row machine. The training before that, mm-hmm. fucking miles times worse than that, mate. Yeah. Wow. Like, you've improved and you've gathered, like, I suppose, like, small bits of momentum all the time over the last yeah. couple of years. Like, I suppose you're still relatively new to the sport as well. Like you said, like, yeah. you know, around five years of that there. But, like, you know, obviously this year, is it has something changed or is it just like your kind of hens coming home to roost after like putting in the hard work for a few years um, now? I feel like, like lockdown was a bit of a blessing because it didn't let work. I couldn't see what it actually took to do an off season because I've never done one before and because I was still at work and things like that, that I got furloughed and I could just concentrate a bit more on training. Um, and then obviously there was no competitions on. So I wasn't like tempted to go and do a competition mm-hmm. to have a few weeks off training. And not having to be fit for that tra- uh, that competition, so I could concentrate purely just on strength, which was, was a big goal of mine. And um, yeah, so we just got strong as fucking lockdown, and then started pick back up the fitness. It was it was a hard one to take though because I like being I like being fairly fit. So when your coach doesn't let you do workouts every day, and you only let to do one workout a week, was was pretty hard to swallow. But it's it, it's definitely paid off. And then obviously making the decision to go all in um, from January and having the word with my dad to be like, this is what I want to do. I want to want to work for you anymore and I want to give this a good shot because I don't want to just turn up to the gym every every day after work and put three hours worth of training in for just kind of being all right. Like, mm. I don't want to do it for Instagram. I don't want to, I don't want to be at semi-finals just to say I'm at semi-finals. Like, if I'm doing this fucking workload, like, I want to take some names and fucking do a, do a number like i can't be asked just to be mediocre about it and was your dad pissed off until he sent us nah, he, was, he, he was buzzing like he seen he seen he seen what it was like when i was in what loser and he seen the size of the crowd and that he's like Fuck no he's, he's all right yeah. uh but he was a bit gutted that that he didn't he lost the graft of life um you said there earlier on that like steve and jack have kind of kept you you know, they've, they've prepared you for some of the stuff that's coming, like, in a mental way, as well as the physical side of it. Like, do you, like when you come off the back of, you know, a really successful open like that and you, you nail one of your goals, like, you, you know, 
piss past one of your goals to, for the Open, is it hard to kind of bring yourself back down before the quarterfinals? Like, because obviously, like confidence is a good thing, but you don't want to yeah. run away with yourself either. Oh yeah, totally. Like he, he even kept me very humbled after after quarterfinals. But the Open, we weren't even concentrating on the Open. The Open, we were just using that as a training block and mm. a training camp. So we dialed in before the Open. We had a few Open simulations. Test and it was a um, seven minute arm wrap with Burt Bees. We had a repeat oh, yeah, of 15.5, yeah. the Ronan and Thruster one. And um, we had a few workouts just to dial in. It was more to show off with fitness what we've done and then to practice warm ups for it because I'm still new to warming up properly for a, a, an open workout because I was just used to coming in from work, finishing work, going straight to the gym and just driving straight. I'll use the first round of the workout to warm me up like. I didn't have I didn't have a clue how to like do not a uh, heart opener or anything like that. So we're just using the M first few weeks, and everyone was buying on about how they wanted just to do the workout one and done. But it was just a chance to warm up again and practice dialing in things like that, and and improve your score because it's it's still still a workout at the end of the day. So we just attack attack that as as that. But then we just cracked on with training after after the open work as well. We didn't make like a big a big deal of them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. How much um how much planning do you put into say like when you see the um dumbbell snatch and burpee over box in yeah. the open or if you see like say okay we're going more recently if like the the snatch and burpee one or the ghd and pistol one like how into the minutia of it do you get when it comes to like okay we want you to do this this and this like is the snatch and burpee one just like just fucking go for it and see what happens yeah or so when i came out it's more like planned i guess um i want to just I, I love sending it from the start and it's not the it's not the best way to do it but i get i get myself too giddy so we used on the friday was just my time just to do what i wanted to do and just fucking send it as hard as i wanted to do so i done the the burpee and the snatch one just how i wanted to do it no plan really and just red line from the start and I was quite wrecked off it. I was like, at the end, I was I was blowing a gasket, but I knew I could have paced it better and finished the workout a lot quicker and felt totally fine about it. And I was watching a few of the, another lads doing it, some Russian kid, he, I remember he done, a, he done quite a fast time. And I was like, if I can get off the 50 dumbbell snatch around eight minutes, 20, I was like, I'll do a low nine. And even though I got a decent score anyways, I was like, I just wanted to prove to Steve and Jack that, that I was capable and we were capable of, of putting that performance in. So I was doing a lot of video analysis and I was doing my own video and I was just figuring out what the best strategy for me was to, to, to put out the score like that. And it was, I wanted to send the first round still, but then pace the burpees and go quicker on the dumbbell snatch and then just send the last round. And that's what, that's what we managed. We, we put out a decent time with that. Yeah. But um, when it comes to the GHD things, I think, yeah, you've got to have a bit more of a strategy going on, especially if it's quarters when you're only going to do the workout one and done. You've got to be very sensible and you can't just you can't just go off the rail straight away because, yeah, it might pay off, but if it doesn't, you, you're in you're in shit. Like. And was it different approach in the quarterfinals compared to other things? Because obviously I saw a lot of people doing like knocking out their front squat straight away on Thursday night and yeah. then other people, you know, like they kind of messed around a bit with the order. Like yeah. was, was did that kind of tactics come into it for you? Oh yeah, that was that was massive that like I'm buzzing I'm buzzing we done it the way we did. Probably could have done event five first of the totally first on a Friday. Because we just thought, oh it was the last it's the last workout, it's nice and short. Um we'll just do it then. But them snatches got really fucking heavy so if we done them quite fresh i probably could have done a time like closer to two minutes rather than where i was at because i had nothing left in my legs for yeah. that but i'm glad i done the front squat we done event one and we done event four which was the front squat and then we done event two which was the which was the ghd one and then the next day my, my abs were, were sound it was normally my it was my legs were pretty lit up off the, off the pistols but my abs and my midline was pretty pretty sound after the ghds um and then we done event three which was the wall balls and the rowing on saturday and then event five on on the sunday and the oh mate the room wall balls one that was that was a rough dig that like that was hard graft yeah i did uh i did the handstand push-up ones i can't do handstand push-ups 
So I was like, I'll do that workout and I'll scale it. I was like, I'll do like straight press with 40 kilos instead of the handstand push-ups. And then I'll do like cleans with the bar because uh, I only have one dumbbell. And I was like, I'll do um, double unders and then I'll do like push press and then push jerk for the second round. So um, I was like, yeah, that'll be grand. Uh, I got time capped after like fucking uh, seven of the push jerks in the second round. And I just honestly stood there for about like, I'd say about 10 minutes after it's just being like, these people are fucking superhuman. Like, it's <laughs> normal what people we, are we, we, One of the lads who, who, who's on GST, he's, he's um, my coach, coaches him. And Scov, he put up a ridiculous time on, on the first one. And I was like, how is that even possible? Because I've just watched, I watched Steve go first and Steve's quite good at handstand push-ups. And Steve done it just under sub, sub eight. And then <clears throat> uh, we heard Scov's time and Scov's time was like six and a half minutes. And I was like, how do you even find a minute and a half off that time? It was ridiculous. We asked him, was that, is that including your minute rest in, in the middle there or what? And he's like, yeah, it's in, in the middle rest. But some of them may have just rapid like and is that like so I know for owning uh mayhem he kind of acts like uh I think Armin Hammer said he acts like a rabbit so he like goes out first so everyone can kind of like chase okay. him a bit is that like yeah. does Steve do that for you like kind of do the work as like for workouts where he, he knows he can still still dig it with her but if it, like the Rowan and Warbles one he's like no 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 he's like use it by yourself on that you can do that one like, yeah yeah that's fair um when quarters is over then and you've got like semi-finals on the horizon like do you like do you settle back down quickly or is it more complicated than, than that because obviously it's not like you can't really go back to a regular training routine i suppose like as yeah. in you, you're not gonna you're not gonna suddenly start working on your strength or something when you've only got no, like a no. few weeks like, it'll probably just be ramp up the volume a bit more so we're tolerant for another weekend like we've just had but we've got i've just had a had a bit more of a deload this week is and totally have a few days off away from the gym and get a few massages more mentally as well just to, so I can reset but when it comes to next week I think we're, we're going to be hitting it pretty hard we're going to have some hard conditioning on days like Monday Wednesday and Friday is going to be <clears throat> double days with wads and conditioning on a morning and obviously we're just going to fit in the, the lifting and gymnastics around that and probably just try and keep everything just topped up going into, going into the semis. Yeah, sounds like Steve might need a new floor again at the end of this. Oh, yeah. Well, we're back in the gym. We'll be here now. Like, I don't know, it's like over in Ireland. Is, is everything open back up yet? No, we have another... Uh, so, like, <laughs> Brexit was a bit of a shit show, but they really played their cards right when it came to the vaccines. They just were like, oh. no, no, we'll keep all that in the UK, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so we're uh yeah we're a good bit behind so i think you, you you guys are open since like monday or tuesday this week we're not there's there isn't even any mention of like when we might be open yet oh, there's not a date yet Fucking no hell. like they're just kind of like people are guessing like we're saying maybe maybe outdoors training like may bank holiday around then yeah. um but we you know we don't really know what story is um it's kind of annoying but yeah i suppose it's you just so... kind of get used to it like doesn't really affect me too much because I'm not like an elite, you know. I don't have anything. It's just like social, really. Like, but yeah. Um, I saw some people putting up uh, stories last night and today about the the survey thing for picking your your event. Did you? Yeah. D- d- is it just total pick whatever you want? Like, yeah. I think, well, obviously, because it's going to get split into thirty thirty. I think mm. you get first come first serve. So obviously, if you finish at the top, you get your first dig. Uh, wherever you pick and then say if I pick German that's one less place in Germany can, yeah. can have and then it goes down like that I, I think it is I'm not too sure but I'm guessing it's gonna gonna be like that and like so like on the face of it everyone likes a live competition so you know yeah. like Holland is live and Germany is online at, as it stands at the minute so I suppose it's kind of interesting because it's like there's a lot of new people in Europe um there's a lot of people who perform really well at live competitions, you know, like you got yeah. and a few other people that, and you don't know where they're going to go. So yeah. is it like, you know, are you kind of, there's a bit of psych, psychological kind of warfare too. Yeah. Like, do I take the hit and do Germany because I'll be able to do it from like fucking Steve yeah. house or whatever. Yeah. Or do I take the risk of going to the live event, not knowing who else is going to turn up or like, how yeah. have you, have you put any thought into that yet? Yeah, I prefer I prefer to do it live, obviously. With and I prefer to do against the the big lads. Like mm-hmm. I'd rather try and give them a give them a dig and BK and Kowski and things like that. But 
I think for just a little bit less stress about getting over there and worrying about doing quarantine or whatever you've got to do to do that like I'd rather just do the, the online one just so around my boys can come down and watch me and get a decent crowd and like we're not have to worry about food prep and accommodation and I can just be in my own little bubble with with with, with my crew like yeah I suppose as well it's kind of we obviously don't know what's going to happen but we know regardless of what changes Germany will definitely be online so at least it's one yeah. less unknown because imagine you went for yeah. Holland and then in three weeks and then you get everything all actually, organized and then yeah before yeah. I'll be in like that so I'll probably yeah I'm going to pick probably the picture um have you so like are you just looking as far as going back to Wigan and training or are you looking as far as like what might come up in the semi-finals? Are you looking as far as what happens if I go past the semi-finals? No, I'm just taking one one step at a time. So I'll go back, box the next week of training off, go from there. And then obviously we're going to get organised for, for what's going to come up for German, but we're not going to think anything anything really past that. We're not going to get ahead of ourselves. So it's just going to be like next job, get this next job, job boxed off and then we'll go from there. That's, um, how, that's how we've been doing it from, from we're like, I'd say obviously not knowing where everyone was going to be at the past year. We're not knowing if you're going to qualify for quarterfinals or um, for semi, sorry. So we're just taking one job at a time, not getting ahead of yourself. Um, is there a workout that you'd love to see? Like, is there something that like, ideally, if you, that you'd be chomping at the bit if you saw it written up? Yeah, that uh, 15.5. <laughs> I, would, I would love to do that. And with the crowd, like, yeah, show sure something special on that. Yeah. Um obviously you're not like looking you're not looking beyond um semi finals, but I suppose historically anyway, the, the the games training like training for the games is very different from training for like the open or any other event really because yeah. you know, you've got stuff like paddleboarding, swimming, oh, like yeah. cycling, all that kind of stuff. Like a lot of that stuff will be I mean, I assume you don't go out paddleboarding at the weekend. So, like, no, no, but I probably need to, mate, because the last time I was on a paddleboard, it was back to front and it was a French throw down. <laughs> and I was like, I was just spinning around in circles. I was like, what the fuck's going on here? I was like, why are they, why are they that far ahead of me? And then one of the lads who was on his way back, uh, Bacon, he was like, Reggie, you've got the fucking paddleboard back to front. I was like, oh, lush. I was like, I was just doing loop. I nearly, I nearly knocked Willie George off his paddleboard and he was at the front on his way back. So, yeah. I'm not probably not the best swimmer as well, mate. Swimmer, I'm like a brick of it. Is that like? It, it, do you think that you'll do like, you know, obviously, again, don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but it, uh, say when you're planning out your year, are you like right? If I qualify from semi-finals, we'll just do like a boot camp kind of thing for a couple of months yeah. and get that sort of stuff nailed in. Yeah, yeah, that's probably that's probably what we're gonna do. Yeah, are you excited by that? Or are you like kind of not trying not to get excited by it? Yeah, I love it, mate. Like Steve's got to rein me in on most days. He, I'm like, I'm bounced and ready to train, and he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, we've got a few sessions a day. I was like, no, no, mate, I'm fucking ready now. I've got about six fucking Red Bulls. I've just dusted some fucking whatever this is. Mate, that Alan, this little bad boy <laughs> is a joke. Literally, it makes your skin crawl off. It feels lush. Yeah, Fraser. Fraser's always talking about that. That he always took that. Um, that Snickers bars and Gatorade concentrate. They're his uh, yeah. his three. Um, is it like you know when you look back and say like you know maybe you might reflect on seasons gone by or you might like say look at last year's open and think what you could have done differently and stuff like that. Like, is it do you, do you guys spend a lot of time looking at like what you've done or is it mainly like looking ahead to what is going to come what? like? Yeah, what we can do and what we need to work on probably is what, what we look at. We don't really reflect on, like, we take away that the positives, what we've done well, but that just gets passed to the side and take that with a bit of confidence going to the next stage. But we're always looking what we can improve on. Like, even on the events I've done well in on quarterfinals, like, I got a few no reps off of Steve and Jack, and I'm glad we've done it that way rather than just being, like, slack with the reps and, I got a few penalties because I didn't stand behind the line on on the Rowan workout, which we totally forgot about. We didn't do it like maliciously, mm. and I was under the wall ball, so I got a five second penalty on that. I got a few fucking no reps on the wall balls, which I may as well have done fucking Karen unbroken. I was looking this day, I was like, "What's the crack here, mate? Is it 150 or 120? What we're doing?" And then it's a quite a workout where 
other seconds on that are hard to find with drone and wall walls because there's only so quick mm. you can do wall walls because everyone's doing it unbroken and there's all and, and drones quite hard to find try to take a few seconds off the split but I'm glad we've done it the way we've done it and we're strict on ourselves with the no reps and we still managed to do a number and place place high up with it but we're always looking to improve on like work transitions and how clean we're reps are and moving efficiently as possible yeah um is coaching something that you want to do like yourself like long term ah uh, not not haven't really thought about that at the minute like want to just concentrate on like what i want to do rather than worry about someone else's weaknesses and trying to get into things like that but i just want to concentrate on what i'm doing at the minute yeah no that's yeah sensible i guess um have you thought about like you know obviously the season changed well, it's like fucking changing all the time, but I suppose the most recent uh-huh. changes have led to... It drains to... me. I've got to tell my family what the season's like every year and I haven't got a fucking clue about CrossFit. And my dad's like, so what's this? So if you win the UK, do you go to the games? I'm like, no, dad, that was like been two years ago. Now, like... You're drawing up, it's like, uh, what's... oh my God, your man and always sunny in Philadelphia, you know, with the whiteboard behind him and you've got all these yeah. everywhere. Like, um, when, uh, when, this season was announced, I suppose, the first thing I noticed was opportunities there for athletes who, like, you know, might make it to the games, might make a bit of a splash at the games. Uh, athletes that maybe won't make it to the games, but, you know, are pretty strong, just maybe not quite there yet with the the off, like the off like off-season competitions where you've got the likes of Wadapalooza, you've got the likes of, you know, Filthy's going to be there and a few others. Yeah. Like, is that something that you've kind of factored in yet or is it like like have you kind of maybe thought about like all right how am i going to structure my whole year or are you just literally yeah. structuring up as far as as far as yeah it's probably as far as that we come to is it we're knowing that the games is either on the cards or not then after that if it's if, if we did or didn't we make it then we'd probably look at the next biggest competition just to get a bit of a feel for a competition things like that and probably some more sponsorships and prize prize money and things like that and then if you're like chomping at the bit to get to get training when you're walking in to steve's garage like what do you like when you're walking onto the competition floor oh mate like I can't go. like the last one was battle for middle ground and me and steve were, were fucking buzzing buzzing we got the, the chance to do that because it was like when covid just started kicking off mm. and uh we were worried steve was like do you reckon I'm going to get Corona here? And I was like, I couldn't give a shit, man. I was like, I just want to get out on the floor, like. Yeah. So we were buzzing to do that and just show off a bit of the work, what we did from Miami and a bit, of, just build a bit of chemistry because we always said that we wanted to go into a team and we had invites to Rogue Invitational and we're just a bit of practice just to, to get what we're like working together. And it was, it was class crap, mate. We had we had a good good weekend there. Like, we use... Uh, some of the workouts were some of the workouts were funny. We uh, the lads were when we were in the warm up area, and the lads were like, "Oh, it's not the first for, it, the first team come off the box." It was one of the events was like fifty box jump overs in sync, into forty worm thrusters, into thirty box jump overs, into twenty year worm thrusters, and the lads in the warm up area were like, "It's not the first team that's coming off these box jumps that uh, that are going to win the event." Like you need to pace this, and like Steve was like, "Just let them crack." And he's like, yeah, show these lads, prove them wrong. That, that we're coming off first year and then we're doing a job again. And one of the other events was like, had all muscle ups in and sync. It was like 15 reps at the end in sync. And I was like, Steve, we're going unbroken on this last bit here. And he jumped up and he failed on the last one. And I looked at him, I was like, you winding me up here. They like, embarrassed me in front of all these people. I was like, get back up here now. He's like, you get down. I was like, no, you get back up. You were arguing on the floor. The judge didn't know what was doing. I was like, get back up here because I'm already up. Yeah. we had a class we had a class crack weekend like it was good it was a good laugh <clears throat> would you think about doing like proper team yeah like maybe he's, I think you, I feel like you need to get bled into it and with Steve and Jack where, where they've been with him and being successful like you couldn't just get hired into the, the deep end with a good mm. young group of athletes like you'd have to have someone who's got a bit of knowledge and experience there to be like this is how it's going to work because it doesn't it doesn't doesn't work like that it doesn't can't, i can't see just a fit group of team like working that well i feel like chemistry is massive on it and yeah in sure. all if, sports, if like, you look at last year sure if it was just about being having four good individuals like yeah. 
there were so many super teams last year that or the year yeah. before, sorry, that should have won but didn't. You know, like because yeah. you do need that chemistry, yeah. like yeah, it's massive. Like in rugby, like I proved in rugby many times that we. I remember my school team used to play against the county every year, and we'd we'd always beat them. And the county had the best group of lads in that county, and we were just a normal state school team, and we'd do a number on them just because of the lads that they used to play together and just playing for each other a bit more, like wanting to play for each other rather than just turning them spin a rugby ball about do you know what I mean yeah there's a similar kind of vibe coming from JST like that kind of I don't want to use the word cult but <laughs> yeah but there's a there's a, uh maybe family is a better a better word to use yeah. but like there does yeah. seem to be that like you know we die for each other kind of thing kind yeah. of it. like even you know obviously it's sad seeing like David having to pull out and a few others but like you can see that there's still that willingness to for other people to do well even if they can't yeah. like it's it's class to to see that as well. I feel like that's what we wanted to create a bit when when we we didn't want to be like anyone to be the favorite or things like that, but we just want to be it's a solid team. And I know the sport is very individual, and you work. No one else is going to do the work for you. But the the group I've got in my corner is just is just so big, and that's like just, want to just do a number for them more than myself as well. Just make make them proud that the the group's effort was was paying off. Yeah. We're going in the right direction with that. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, all right, well, look, we'll finish with a quick fire. Um, so snatch or clean? Oh yeah, clean any day. <laughs> uh, run or ski? Ski. You probably haven't ran in fucking ages, have you? I've done. I've, we've done bits. We've done bits, but not nothing serious. Like yeah, no more. No more power. <laughs> uh, squat or deadlift? Squat. Uh, row or bike? Row. Yeah, I figured. Uh, dumbbell or barbell? Barbell. Uh, slow and heavy or light and fast? Light and fast. Yeah, I figured that might be might be the case. Um, well, listen, thanks a million. Um, that was great. Uh, I think you know you're like I, we kind of talked at the start about how you wanted to do things your way and you wanted to you know you don't want to I suppose pander to to the crowd and or to I suppose companies and stuff and be like yeah. pretend to be anyone you're not. And I think it, it really comes across. And it makes you like a likable guy and someone that, yeah. that's uh, endearing to people. So um, congrats on everything you've achieved so far this year. And I'm looking forward to seeing what you can do in uh, whatever online in Germany or in Holland or whatever, whatever happens. Cheers. I appreciate that, mate. Cheers, man.